which means it's going to kill all those existing weeds we have out there it's also going to create kind of a What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Tuesday, October 31st here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna be talking about three things you can do with your garden this winter to reduce your weed pressure and make your gardening a lot more enjoyable. And then we're gonna implement one of those things in this weedy plot here behind me. So let's jump right in. Number one would be something we talked about on our most recent video, which would be growing food. I hope that's what most of you are doing with your garden plots this fall and winter, if you can, growing some delicious veggies for your family to enjoy. So if you're growing food in your garden this fall and winter and either mulching or employing those frequent shallow cultivation strategies that we talked about on the last video, you're going to be doing a great job at keeping everything nice and clean and keeping the weeds from taking over. But maybe you live somewhere where it's too cold to grow a fall or winter garden or maybe you just need a break. Maybe you need to just take a break from the garden this fall and winter and get back started next spring. And so if you need to take a break, which is understandable, everybody needs a break every now and then, option number two would be to plant a cool season cover crop like we have here. When we plant them thick like this, we don't have to worry about any of those winter weeds thriving. We just plant it, water it every now and then, and just let it do its thing, feed the soil, and prevent any weeds from taking over. But maybe you're a little apprehensive about cover crops because you've never tried them, you don't really know what to plant, so you're a little scared to give it a go. Or maybe you've messed around and waited a little too late to get your cool season cover crops up and going before it gets too cold. And so that brings us to option number three, the old handy dandy tarp, which is what we're going to be using in this plot. So for those of you who haven't been following along, back in the middle of the summer, we planted this entire plot with an heirloom giant blue corn variety called McCormick's Blue Giant Corn. Looked pretty dang good for a while. And then Hurricane Idalia come along, blew it down pretty hard. We didn't get very good pollination. Some of it stood back up, some of it didn't. And so the storm pretty much ruined our chances of getting a really good harvest here. Now I was able to salvage a few ears before I mowed all this down. Most of them were pretty runt, like these right here, just a few inches long. Did have one or two that looked pretty nice, like this right here. This is what we should have got across the entire plot had it not got blown down by the storm. I don't even think I have enough here to warrant getting the sheller out or being able to grind up an entire bowl of grits but I just kind of held on to it so I could show it to you all. Eventually, I do have about another half pound of seeds left from what we didn't plant here the first time, so we'll try again next year. Now before Hurricane Idalia, when this corn was still standing upright, I was able to do a pretty good job of keeping the weeds under control. Once that corn got blown over, it was impossible to get in here and weed. As a result, we got pigweed all over the place can't see as much of it now because I mowed this down so close but it was everywhere in here before we mowed it. And so the pigweed problem in this plot goes way back several years ago to when we added a bunch of gin trash compost to a lot of these plots out here. For some reason we only had an issue in this plot. I'm thinking we just got just a little bit. It doesn't take much. Just one little bad scoop in this plot here that had a lot of pigweed seeds in it. Maybe that scoop didn't get composted as well as the other stuff that we added to the other plots. I don't really know, but that's the most plausible source from where all this came from. So I've been fighting it for a while now, and I feel like I've been putting a dent in that pigweed weed seed bank. But as you can see here, we still got a lot of it there that we need to kill off. So instead of raking out the rest of this corn debris and just wheel hoeing this plot over and over again to reduce that pigweed seed bank, which is something we could do and something that would work, we're going to use the tarp right over here to help us out a little bit. What that will do is kill all the remaining pigweed we have that sprouted in here, and it should also reduce our pigweed seed bank. So let me go grab some bricks to hold this tarp down and we'll get the tarp in place and we'll talk about 
what kind of tarps you can use for a technique like this kind of how it works and some things you're going to need to do about every month or so if you're planning on tarping for a long period of time like we are here all right so a little tricky with the way the wind's blowing today but i got it down when you're doing this by yourself you just kind of have to pin down one side and then work your way around the edge till you get it all straightened out so the main thing this tarp does is exclude sunlight which means it's going to kill all those existing weeds we have out there it's also going to create kind of a damp or moist and warm environment underneath the tarp which is perfect for seed germination so all those weed seeds we have in that soil will germinate but then they'll immediately die because there's no sunlight and so this is not a super fast solution but it is a very effective solution i would say if you're going to do a tarping system like this make sure you've got at least a month to let it do its thing now when we're talking about tarping the questions we always get are what kind of tarp do i need and where can i get it so what we're using here is a six mil uv resistant black tarp uv resistant is very very important you can't just use your regular old blue tarp that you go get from a big box store those things will crumble in the sun eventually you got to have something that's uv resistant like this black tarp here is i've had this one for several years it sat out in the sun a long long time it may look a little dirty but it's still good as new so in addition to being uv resistant or being able to hold up in the sun this tarp also has to block all sunlight otherwise it doesn't work like i just described now you can find tarps like these pretty easily online there's a lot of places that sell them the problem with ordering something real heavy like this online is that the shipping costs will kind of eat you up so they're going to be a lot more expensive if you order them online because you got to deal with those big shipping costs as well so online is an option but there are some local spots you can pick up a tarp like this so around here we have a little chain of stores called agri supply and they have all kind of different stuff in there a lot of times they carry these black six mil uv resistant tarps so if you have one of those stores nearby check with them they might have what you need usually they're in really really big rolls so you'd have to cut it down to whatever size you need now another really good and often even more affordable option is finding a billboard place nearby so a lot of times these places will either sell you those old billboard wrappings for next to nothing or i've heard of some places just giving them away and those are definitely uv resistant because they have to sit out in the sun all the time up there on those billboards so if you can find a billboard place grab some of those they may not be exactly the size you need but you can kind of patch them together and make them work now i mentioned earlier that if you're going to do this you probably want to leave the tarp on a spot for at least a month for it to kind of do its job as far as working on your weed seed bank here we're probably going to leave this tarp for several months the earliest thing i can think that we would plant here would maybe be potatoes which we're not going to need to plant to the middle of february now the wind is giving me fits with this one a little bit but once that wind calms down and we can get this thing straightened out it will kind of suction to the ground and then get some rain will help too and so when we're going to leave a tarp on a spot for several months the one thing we've got to worry about is it getting too dry and letting the soil get too baked underneath that tarp so one thing that i like to do which i actually did a couple days ago is to soak the soil really good before i'm going to add a tarp so i ran an overhead sprinkler on this plot overnight a few nights ago to soak down that soil really good knowing i was going to be putting a plot on top of it in the next few days what that does is help create that moist or damp environment get those weed seeds germinating so that they'll then die because there's no sun it also helps things from getting too dry underneath the tarp there i have left a tarp on a spot too long you pull it off and the soil becomes kind of hydrophobic you can pour water on it and the water just runs off the soil it won't absorb it and you have to really really suck it down to get the soil where it will absorb water again we don't want that to happen we don't want to kill all the biology in our soil so we want to keep this moist underneath here so we can get those weed seeds to germinate 
also not kill our soil. So what I will do with a long-term tarping occasion like this is every three to four weeks, pick a day where there's hardly any wind. I'll pull back the tarp, not fold it up, just pull it back. I'll lightly cultivate the plot and then I'll soak it down with water. So what that light cultivation does, just cultivating the first few inches of soil there with the wheel hoe, is help kind of stir up those weed seeds. So this tarp should kill any of those weed seeds that are right at the top, but what about those that are down a little bit deeper in the soil? Just kind of stir those up a little bit every three to four weeks so that they're now at the top of the soil. They'll hopefully germinate and die as well. And then after that light cultivation, I'll take the overhead sprinkler, soak this plot down really good for several hours, and then we'll put the tarp back on. That way we maintain our moist environment that's really good for weed seed germination. We've stirred up that weed seed bank. And if we do that several times throughout the winter, we should put a significant dent in our weed seed bank. And I'll be sure to keep you all updated on the progress of this in a few weeks when we pull it back, lightly cultivating water. We'll take a look at the plot, see how good a job the tarp has been doing so far. And one more thing I should mention, this is one of our no-till plots, so we don't run our tiller in this plot. That's why we use the wheel hoe for those periodic light cultivations. If you have a tiller and you like using it, that will shuffle that weed seed bank even more by bringing up those older weed seeds to the top killing them off so you can do the same technique with a tiller you don't have to do this in a no-till plot so hopefully you're able to grow some food or at least a cover crop in your backyard garden this fall or winter but if you're not consider covering your garden that way you can really work on your weed seed bank and have a relatively weed free garden going into spring and as always, you can find links and coupon codes for our affiliate partners in the description below. Also, go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you want to learn more about this tarping process and see some of the results as far as really reducing the weed seed bank, check out this video right here where we'll show you some of our results from last year. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.